Well, hello everyone. It is Professor Oleander, and I uh, thought I would do a relatively quick video today because there was a pretty major update for Railroader yesterday. And uh, let me just pull up the notes here. I mean, they're it's a mile long. There's a lot of bug fixes. Two things in particular that were added. Uh, the major one would be hot boxes. So if we come over here to our locomotive and we just mouse over the running gear, you'll see that it says 99% oiled. And what that is, is as your um, rolling stock and your locomotives are going down the track, they'll start consuming oil. I don't know exactly how much it is, something like a percent every couple of miles or something like that. I believe the way that it is written is once you get down below, yeah, as the oil level drops below 50%, wear starts to rise, as does the risk of a hot box on cars only. Now, through the console command, you can actually get a hot box on your locomotive. Uh, they're going to tweak with this as things go forward. Uh, let's see here. You can spot a hot box by the smoke as well as a tool tip. If a hot box occurs, you'll want to add oil and keep the speed below 15 miles per hour to avoid further damage. Now the AI engineers will automatically slow down if they encounter a hot box. Uh, let, me get, let me get him out of the way here and I'll go to my free fly camera, which of course is back here. So I'm going to take my my twins here and I'm going to move them up because I want to show you something else that uh, was added in. Among the other things that they've added in this particular update is, let's see, sound. You can put everything up to 200. I took the whistles down. I'm probably going to put everything back to uh, 100 just so it's not too terribly loud one of the things that I noticed last night when I was playing was if you have it up to 200 and you've got surround sound when the cars are going by it sounds like thunder which is actually pretty cool I believe my headset's on right now um, I do have a yeah I've got a fusee on this track so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell this uh, this guy I could have done it down there too is I'm just gonna have him reverse at like five miles an hour or something like that. and he's gonna do his thing and you'll see what happens when he gets to the fusee. Let me make sure he's... Yeah, he's lying. Uh, let's see. So going on with the hotbox stuff, they'll go at 15 miles per hour. Uh, cars in good conditions will only consume about 0.5% of their oil in a mile. So basically a full percent every two miles. Engineers... Let's get you moving a little bit faster. Uh, AI engineers when stop will gradually walk the train and oil any cars below 75% oil level. Um, I have made the suggestion that the AI engineers only oil the engine, the engine and the tender, and if you put a caboose on the train, let that crew walk the train. And then that gives something for the caboose to do other than just exist. There are mods out there that actually utilize the caboose and crew hours. It's kind of a convoluted thing. I tested it a little bit. All right, why'd you stop for? All right. Um, there you go. That's what I was looking for. This is one of the new updates right now it is just for fusees let me make sure i can find it here Let's get that menu because there's there's quite a bit in here uh notices here we go sometimes there's a lot going on and it's easy to miss or forget something or miss an important message like an ai engineer running low on water that's where the new notices com features come into comes in i'm trying to read into my own thing here 
Notices appear in the upper right corner and stay until you dismiss them or are canceled. Notices currently appear for AI engineer fuel water levels, stop signals, fusee, and player connection changes. We plan to expand this feature in the future. So as of right now, like it says, this is just for fuel water levels, stop signals, fusees, and player changes. Like so if you have a player that drops out drops connection it'll tell you that the, the train is no longer manned I expect that this will be expanded to hot boxes um, reaching the end of track you're stopped uh, they still do their their thing up here they'll call their signals um, things like that and like I said they're gonna expand on it but I I fully expect that this will be a hot box thing. That whenever the hot boxes, uh, they'll get added into the list. Currently, right now, and I don't feel like going into sandbox mode to show you. Uh, when you get a hot box, you'll get this same engineer uh, call out right here, except it'll say one hot box spotted or hot box spotted, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty cool feature that they've added. And just going back here towards what I was reading, I, I, as I was saying, it would be nice if they would make it where the caboose crew would actually handle uh, oiling the train. That way that the caboose has a, a purpose. But Connor had said that they have... Uh, they're working on some things for the caboose, so we'll just wait and see on that one. Uh, let's see here. AI engineers periodically check the train for hot boxes and automatically reduce speed. You can always turn off hot boxes in the settings for your game. So if we go over here to settings, uh, it's in features, I believe. So you can adjust your wear and tear rate. That's something that they added, which I was actually glad to see. Uh, which that was actually the next thing on the list here. They've adjusted the... Uh, they've tweaked it twice. This will be... Well, actually, this will be the third time that they have adjusted the actual wear and tear. It used to be 1,000 miles. Then they went to 5,000 miles. Now they're back to 2,500 miles. So as it says right here, for general use, expect condition to fall from 100 to... 90% in the first 200 miles, but it will take over 3,000 miles before you reach 50%. This is the default setting. You can adjust this and the overhaul mileage, which is now set to 2,500 by default. And I think there was a bug where it would take multiple overhauls to get it back to where your cap was 100%. So if you remember this from the last time I talked about it, you would you would use the engine the wear would go down the condition would go down say you got to 50 percent you could repair it but the cap that your repair could get to would be lower so let's just say you got down to 50 percent you put it in for repairs well they can only repair it up to 90 percent and then you get it back down to 50 percent again you put it in for repairs and then it can only go up to 80 percent the only way to get that cap back up was to actually go in for an overhaul, which would bring it back up to 100%. So that's that's sort of how that works. And uh, they've also adjusted the way that the shops hire. So if I go to locations here, and we'll just pick up the Whittier engine service. The shop automatically hires repair crew based on how much equipment is present. So used to be you had to select the amount of workers that you wanted now you actually just pick how fast you want to repair it so if you want to repair it at 20 times speed you you know when you have a car on the repair tracks they're going to hire everybody in as to work on it as fast as they can to get it back out the door so that's sort of how that works now you don't have to sit there and hire 20 guys and then pay them just sitting around now you just select how fast you want it to repair when you put the car on the track then 
uh, you actually start paying for it. And you see here it's fifty day fifty dollars per day per car. So if you want two times and such like that, I expect that that's probably going to get um, that's probably going to get changed. Yeah, repair crews work factor faster when your railroad has a higher reputation. The other thing that got added into is repair parts. I don't think I talked about this the last time. Um, and it's the same thing. You have to kind of keep an eye on this. I should probably order a box car uh, to go ahead and fill up my engine services. I just haven't done it yet. But that is a thing where you, it's sort of like your coal loaders. You have to have a box car with the parts in them stationed by the shop. You run out of parts, you can't repair anything. So that's another little thing that they've added. And let me just kind of scroll through here because there's a lot in this update. The contextual menu. Let me actually go somewhere. There, you're going to see a lot more tracks here than I normally have. And you're also going to see that the map is kind of broken. Uh, it's because I haven't updated the new to the new um, map extended the update broke a lot of stuff last night and everything's patching in it never fails as soon as i get back into where i'm starting to play railroader i get all the mods where i want it because i've added a couple more um undoubtedly railroader will update and then it breaks all of them so i'm actually fortunate i spent most of the night last night trying to get everything working again you can see i brought a caboose down here i'm sort of playing off that and um there is a mod that you can get that does tweaks where the caboose actually up here it would say like uh, crew hours you have a pool of crew hours and to do certain tasks so you can set all your handbrakes or uh, align all of your air hoses or connect all your air hoses I should say and then once you run out of crew hours you basically have to go to a crew change point and then refill your hours it's an interesting concept it's still a work in progress but uh i may do that at some point so first thing you'll see is that the handbrake has turned kind of a purple color that little wheel down there at the bottom that indicates that the uh, handbrake is on and you also notice that right there beside where it says east Whittier interchange it says that that's that it's in route to it uh, and then of course your your load but if i right click on this now we've got a contextual menu so we can select the car which is just like anything else like if I go over here and I select the engine it brings me up my little thing here if I want the info panel inspect you can bleed all the air off of it you can release the handbrake which we can just do that this has probably been one of the biggest quality of life things that I've seen in a while um, and I still catch myself having to do the whole not that but having to control click which can be a little, little annoying if, I, if I'm wanting to set a handbrake. Now, I still do this if I'm, if I'm kicking cars and whatnot, but now, instead of having to control click, do that, and then control click, do that, now I can just go one by one, say apply the handbrake, and it is a little finicky, but just apply, 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 so much quicker. And then same thing if I want to release them like that. So I expect I was not expecting that to get put in. Uh, them having some kind of contextual menu had no idea they were going to put it in here. I don't even think it had been teased at. Um, yeah, I mean I, I don't know what else I could say about it. It just I wasn't expected, and I'm actually happy that they did it. What have I got? I got two on there. So we got the notices. The next thing is CTC switch unlocking. I don't have CTC on this save yet, so I can't really show you that. But it's basically, uh, let's see, if you're doing switching around CTC, it can be cumbersome to clear the interlocking and contact a dispatcher every time for throw. So it's basically like if you had a signal, it's been a while since I've actually done CTC, so I can't really speak to it a whole lot. But if you had a signal on this right here, this would be your interlocking. If it was if it was signal controlled, 
you have to get far enough away from the interlocking to actually throw the switch. Otherwise, it's going to say, well, you can't throw that because it's occupied. Uh, it says, now crews can unlock and lock CTC switches using switches contextual menu and verbal permission from the dispatcher, of course. And basically, you just right-click on it and you see how it says no contextual, no context options available. I haven't really messed with it too much because I haven't done CTC on this save yet. I could... Um, I guess I could load up the old save and then I can show you how much of a hornet's nest that thing is. So we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, we have put a lot of effort into, oh, by unlocking CTC, by unlocking a CTC switch, the crew can throw as it is needed, can throw it as needed and lock it again once they're done, returning to dispatcher control. Uh, let's see here, a lot of effort into CTC systems, so they're still actively working on the CTC. The other thing that got added, this is more for multiplayer than anything else, is uh, switch audits. Uh, let's see here. So apparently there were issues with all multiplayer servers, as you can imagine, where people were throwing switches that they didn't need to do, uh, or they didn't need to be messing with either trolling or didn't know any better uh, so what they have done we're considering introducing enhanced access controls to help with this to see the switch audit hold shift while hovering over the switch and a tooltip will expand to show the available audit data now I don't know how much I've thrown this one actually I have okay so the top one there where it says throw, nor throw normal by uh, 461T, that means that the engine went through it while it was thrown against it. And then the other one, it shows where I was throwing it. So like if I throw it right now, you see it's thrown reversed. And if I throw it back, you'll see it's thrown normal. So that's that. And I don't know if there is a way to change how far back the switch history goes, uh, but right now it only shows you the last three times that it was thrown. Is it enough? Who really knows? Now below that there is a whole long list of release notes, mainly focuses on the wear and tear and the hot boxing and oiling which I didn't show you this. These cars back here should have uh, some usage on them. You see they're at 96%. Uh, let's see. That's at 99. These cars just moved, moved from here. But 96%. I think the passenger train might have a little more. Yeah, 98%. And like I said, once you get down to 50%, your chances... Once you get to 50%, your chances for hot boxes and actual wear go up. Uh, let me just read through and just see here. Revised equipment. Let's see here. Revised equipment wear from general use to incentivize daily service, but not drop dramatically until condition reaches 50%. One thing that I have noticed is this again of course it's not midnight yet I did actually I was having an issue where like this this entire day in game I didn't get any cars for Robinson and I thought that my I thought something might have been broken and I actually went ahead and skipped ahead to the next day to make sure the cars were going to be there and they are so uh, the safety rating is not as dependent on condition and it's largely it largely has to do with this you see that it says my passenger equipment condition is at 99 which i think i've got like one car at 98 or something like that um but the whole deal is because now we have actual wear going in i think you don't get a ding on your safety score until you get below like 80% or something like that because I do have one and I'll show you 
and it's because it was actually the AI that did this and not me. I just bought this locomotive. This is a C46. And coming down to Alarca, because it's a light engine move, I had it set for 45. Well, when it gets down here to the runaround over here, so when it comes down this track here and it goes through this switch, I don't know if it's because in the mod this track is not tagged for speed. So it's just like going 45. Well, it hit this switch down here, apparently going 45, and it derailed the engine. So that's why the condition is at 85. And I was like, I could go in and fix it. I could go back and do a previous save, and I just said, to heck with it. We'll, we'll roll with it. Fire the crew or something like that. Let's see. This reading through here. Repair times are non-linear. Right. Repair times are non-linear depending on the condition of the equipment. It will take longer to repair from 50, per si 50 to 60 percent than it will to repair from 90 to 100. One overhaul is sufficient to re return equipment to full condition. Added overhaul information to the equipment panel. Revised presentation to show service miles. That was something else that, uh, I don't know if you caught. So if we go to the equipment tab here, you say overhaul, it's due in 2479. And then a repair estimate. So like right now, if I were to put this in to the shop, it would take 10 hours. Now, obviously, if I go in here and I adjust, uh, it's in locations. If I go in here and adjust, to 20 or something like that and I set the repair destination to uh, East Whittier repair track it doesn't update okay so if that took 10 hours and let's just say that we we did it double now it would take six hours because it's almost 11 it would take like five and a half so that's sort of how that works and then over here added the context for uh, yeah that's CTC oh the clickety clack sound for steam engines so it used to be engines rolled silently when they were just kind of uh, trailing now they sound like the cars adjusted selection of cars delivered to the interchange to be based on a normal distribution better preferring cars that are appropriate to the power present on your railroad now I don't exactly understand that one I believe it has to do with the size of the cars and how heavy they are so if you don't have a lot of heavy or a lot of bigger power it's not going to send you massive coal guns that are you know over a hundred tons a piece because you're not going to have the power to, to handle it that's sort of how I think that is um told about the shift the switch record Added notices in the upper right. Ability to set train train crew from employees panel, which I got to remember where that one is. So here I can, you know, just pick me if I had train crews done. I could do that. You can assign your roles and all that. Um, let's see here. Ability to rename train crews, which I, th I thought you could do that before, but apparently not. I think you had to delete them. Added East Whittier interchange map label. Interchange now only appears when enabled. Tool tips to signal heads. We'll look at that in just a second. Updated the A26. Uh, oh, yeah. I showed, talked about the destination and spotted thing. Changed Alarca Junction water column milestone destination track to match other... Alarca Junction site tracks. This will require existing cars spotted at the prior locations to be moved. Change the milestone button to use start when ordering purchased, ordering cars and purchase for milestones without cars. Okay. Let's see. Change the AI whistles to more rapidly. Just kind of looking through here to see if there's anything else. Mines now spot cars with air connected end angle cocks open and brake cylinders bled that was a huge quality of life one like if you had 
40 cars at Robinson Gap, it was always kind of random which cars had the air hoses connected, which ones had the handbrake set, and then so you had to go through there. Now, whenever they they move down from the upper track into the actual loaded tracks, the air hoses are connected, um, and just the cars that are on the very ends have disconnected air hoses, or the angle cocks are open. Improved display of small quantities of weight measured load. I'm not sure about that one. I haven't seen it yet. Audio is muted when pausing. That's a big one. Expanded range of sound preference sliders to 200. I already showed you that. Let's see here. Phantom switch sounds. Diesel stand. I don't think I've ran into any of these other ones. Fixed AI start not starting with reverse at 100%. I have run into that one a couple times. Uh, that was one of the reasons why they were using so much water because the throttle was wide open and they weren't. Um, they didn't have the reverse for full forward. And I think that is the extent of that. Let me go into my other save. It's been a while since I played this one. We'll go into the old SOL because this one has CTC enabled. And I can actually show you what kind of a mess this railroad's in right now. I've actually I was thinking last night. Uh, I don't know what tracks got deleted. Um where's my nearest switch? back here somewhere now there we go so this is the signal head contextual thing so if you just I was thinking that it did something on that pole but apparently not so that tells you what signal it is it just says intermediate stop and proceed at restricted speed and then you got to clear and this is an intermediate signal which is why that does that if we go up here to a block signal, which is one that's controllable, it would be this one. Stop and do not pass. And stop and do not pass. Same thing with this one. This is clear. So that's sort of how that works. The intermediates. And I can actually throw that one there. Which I don't know why that should have a diverging unless I get something up here. Do I have the other one? That's why. Well, no, it's not. That one there. Oh, because it's occupied. Dur. Let me pick another one here. Let's go down to Governor's Island. Oh, hit the wrong button. So here's another one. Which says it's an approach. If I were to throw this one here, then it would say a diverging approach on both signal heads. Same thing there. You can see all the other ones moving. And if we go back this way, it should give me a diverging... I think it's still going to be a diverging approach until I open up the other one. Let's go back and open the other one then. I could do this on the map, but I'm doing it the hard way. Yeah, diverging clear. So there you go. That's what that's all about. Now let me show you what kind of a mess this railroad's in, and I was actually thinking last night that I want to try and fix it. So this is the mixed consist with the twins. This is all the stuff coming from Silva, I believe.
these cars are going to get loaded with coal for me. So we've got that one. The big one is actually down here. It's right here. So I've got this train stalled and I don't, they, this train was supposed to stop. It was actually supposed to stop back here and then it was going to pick up a helper. I don't know why it blew past whatever I had in front of it, um, but it did. So there's that. And then the other issue is right here. This jumble of mess, which this can be remedied relatively easy because I've got new pulpwood cars that don't take up near as much room. But this is Graham County. This is all the pulpwood cars that I have. And in order to run the railroad the way I wanted to, it's a pain. And the, the way that I had this set up was... I wanted it the way that they had the this interchange set up before. So it used to be you'd bring the cars up here, they'd go away, they'd come back loaded. Now you actually have to have the cars up here and then they load just like they did before. And it's like I wish they would go back and do it the other way where it was like it took because they would go out and then they'd come back. Now I have to sit here and just move the cars wait for them to load and then come back and get them again and then you can see I've just got way too many cars here so that's part of the problem and then if we go down here to Andrews I've got a full interchange here at Andrews and it was just it was way too much um, it's just way too much the the mod that I have now and I can actually go into this one I don't care too much the mod that I have now I can go in here to map features and I can add let's see here the inter Andrews interchange yard there it goes so now I have this extra sorting yard right here so instead of having to figure out somewhere where I can switch all these cars around much like I do in Silva now I can come over here and I can sort the cars down on this track and then build the train to go out there's actually some other ones that you can add there's a balloon track that comes straight across here uh, I've debated it actually I think it cuts this stub off and it goes back around here and ties in and I've actually thought about adding it but I'm kind of against it right now I think as long as I have this one then that's fine and my plan was always to have a separate set of locomotives to work this and then have your little you know receiving tracks or whatever or just have somewhere where they can they can sit and the same thing in Silva. Let me go to Silva here. And this is the other problem too. You see how many cars that I've got in Silva? It's just, it, it was getting to the point where I had so many cars on the railroad, I have nowhere to put them. I can't sort them because there's literally no room. You know, because like right here, it's you have to go all the way up here to this switch in order to sort anything, and there's just not enough room for it. So I've had, um, plus there's no room in the interchange whenever the interchange has been serviced. And as you can see, the interchange is already full again. So I added, uh, let's see here, added that one. And that adds this track just like it did in Andrew. So now you can sort them off of it this way. And that's part of Alina's map mods. And then what else did I have on here? 
I can't do the crossover because it's going to mess up that train. But you can get a Y, which is off in the woods. Give it a second to load. So there's your Y. Give that a second. And then the Alarca, or not the Alarca. That wasn't the one I wanted. It's actually this one. Which is right here. So before, whenever I had passenger trains come in, they had to just kind of sit here on the siding until they uh, were ready to go. Now you can actually pull them down into this and let them sit there. So that way they're, they're ready to go, they're out of the way, you've got more room for whatever. Uh, what else did I add on this thing? These you already know about. The paper crossovers are up here so that we don't have to go down so far. The Alarca balloon track, which I already had. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's... there. It adds... A, I think this is part of the mod to add a, a water column there. The Alarca Junction one is is already there. The one that I have not talked about yet, and I was actually debating on if I was even going to add it. There's actually two more. So there's this one, which is this is the Bird Town uh, Bird Town branch, and what it does is it adds a little yard here, just before Ella. And I can't remember if this track is supposed to connect in. I don't think it is. But it adds an industry here. This will be the main line. This is the branch. So basically you come off. That's where it branches off here. Now they haven't done CTC yet. And I suspect at some point that will end up happening. There's also another connection back here. Way back here. That runs off and there's more going to be added to this there's some like uh, let's see you got a big tunnel over here a couple of tunnels there's supposed to be a gold mine going to be added let's see you've got this separate little yard over here with a big balloon track um, I think the gold mine is supposed to be somewhere somewhere right along in here and then over here, there's like a, I think that's the brewery. And then you've got some other stuff here. All this stuff over here. It's a little, little jam-packed, but um, like I said, I was debating on putting this in. And I kind of, I finally just broke down and decided that I was going to go ahead and do it. Because why not? Uh, the, the cross ties are there. They're just not loading in for whatever reason. But that's sort of... That's what I've added. There they go. Um, so yeah, there's the first big one. And then the second one is actually at Bryson. So over here off of where the old line uh, branched off near where Appalachian Hardwoods are, which that would be right here. This is where the line used to end. Now it extends it on. You've got this little yard here, and then on up above that, you actually have this yard, which is actually an interchange. So, if you have this mod, and you've got Silva and Andrews unlocked, you can have a third interchange here. And then if you have the Alarca is big enough mod, then you can have a fourth interchange at Alarca. And then if you've got the interchange to interchange mod, you can go in here, and I think it's, yeah, here we go, Bryson, I believe it's West Bryson Interchange. Then you can get uh, interchange contracts for all four of your interchanges. So if you're an absolute sadomasochist and you want more cars to change or to switch, you can have four interchanges that have uh, cars for you. 
so that's our main line right there this is the old line that used to come off here and as you can see main line passes above these are more added industries the way that you get to them is right here you come in past Appalachian hardwoods you go through the cross over here and then you you double back so all kinds of things and I can actually show you the industries um, this was already there this is added um, this is added added these couple right in here have been added and then up here at Birdtown which I think it's all under Ella Over here there we go so basically everything from here to here and then from here and then these two these tuckasegis that's all been added and they're all on the the new save um i am in sandbox now aren't i so let me see let me find a car We'll just pick a car here, and I'll pull the the thingy off. Actually, let me do it right now. Let me make sure that the track is clear. Let me throw that, and get everything's nope. Okay, let me pick a car here. So this guy right here. Let me think. Of, see if I can remember what the uh, command is I think it's set uh, this is this is CNO C and O three six two nine I believe it's hotbox one Yeah, there we go. And let me just turn it off. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll get them moving. Go away. This is just so you can see it. Stop. Oh, because they're on the second track, dummy. That was why I had that switch thrown. Okay. hot box for whatever reason the, uh, the smoke effect actually it's over on this side for whatever reason it only does it on one side it's just like derailments only happen to the right you hardly ever see a left hand derailment and you see right here where it says SOL 735 one hot box spotted so that's the the, uh, the animation for it no fire just a light and some smoke and I'm actually, I meant to check this last night and I don't think it happened. But let's just say we want to CRR 108-203 hotbox 1. I don't know if it's just because they're trying, well, it's working now. You can put them on locomotives too if you wanted to. This is the first one I've actually seen that was on the left side. When I tried it last night, they were only going on the right. But as you can see, the glow has kind of pulled away from it. 
And if you notice, they've slowed down to 15. Now, it says that engines will not have hotboxes. And of course, I had to test this. Last night, and you'll probably see it in the picture that I have, it's a thumbnail for this video, um, you could get them to uh, to have a hot box on your locomotive doing it like that. You see it says that there's a hot box, but it's not doing the animation, the smoke and whatnot. And another thing that, it's not, it's not a, a deal breaker, but um, when you have a hot box, your oil doesn't go down to zero, which theoretic, I mean, in real life it would because once you have a hot box like that, it's actually burning off the oil. So your oil would very rapidly decrease. And the condition, you probably should have some condition degradation, but you see there you get a little thing that says hot box. This is damaged equipment may perform. Oh, that's just for condition. Doesn't say anything about the hot box. But like up here on 735. Well, last night when I did it, it made the it dropped it like five percent or something like that. So anyway, that is pretty much the extent of this update. And I've been working more and more in Railroader. I spent pretty much all day yesterday working on it, just trying to get back in the groove of things. And now that they've had this update, it's just a lot more to do. But I'm um, probably going to do this, play this one some more, and then uh, thought about doing some flight simulator stuff. I don't know yet. But a uh, very cool update. And uh, I'm curious to see what else they're getting ready to add to the game because the, the way Connor was talking is that they have a lot more stuff that they're wanting to put in. They're just not there yet with it. The big thing that I know is coming that was teased months and months ago is being able to send AI. So instead of having to manually throw switches for the AI and control them, you basically tell them, I want you to go here, and they throw their own switches and do their own movements. They're not there yet, and I think that's probably going to be one of the last features that gets added, but there's several things in the works, so I'm really curious to see uh, what they have in store for us next, and that's all I have to say for this video, so until next time, later.